project that aims to bring orchestration, high availability, and also scaling to open stuff. So first, I'm going to spend about 15 minutes talking about it in general, what it is, what it does, how would you go about using it, um, perhaps why. Um, then I'm going to, going to give you about a seven, seven minutes long demo, and at the end, <laughs> and if there's time at the end, I'm going to um, try to answer some questions. So what is it? Um, it's a fairly recent project, um, built internally at Black Hat, but it sort of aims to be a proper open stack project, I'm going to get to that later on. And it aims to bring orchestration, high mobility, and auto scaling to, to open stack. So what that means is when you want to launch something that is a bit more complex than just you know launching a single VM, um, then you can just SSH into it, install the packages and be done with it. But if it's something more complicated, for instance, you have a database server um, that it, to which it, that connected three application servers, and you have you want to have a, um, a local server in front of that, and perhaps putting IP addresses on EBS, EBS services and quantum networks and stuff like that, um, suddenly it becomes a bit more complicated, and you actually want to have some sort of script that will you know bring it all up and keep it uh, keep it there. So that's essentially what he does. The way it works is you write what we call a template where you, using the declarative language, you essentially describe the cloud deployment that you want to have. So you would put that, that you, you want to have these sort of databases that are backed by uh, EBS, that you want to have these application servers with a load balancer in front of that, and all that. You describe that in a file, you put that file to here, and it will process it and launch the thing, uh, make sure that all the dependencies are resolved and that all the instances are provisioned. And at the end, um, optionally, you can have, have heat to keep it up and you know, monitor it. So um, heat in and of itself doesn't do much. It needs to be connected to the OpenStack services that actually do the proper work, right? So. Um, you, you're going to have, a, you're able to connect to Nova and launch Nova instances. You're able to attach block or switch um, storage. Um, you can use floating IP addresses, load balancing, auto scaling. Those two are, are not natively supported for OpenStack, so he does that. Um, and you know we have support for for networking by quantum. Now. In case you're familiar with uh, Amazon Cloud Formation, he has been inspired by that very heavily. So that from, from the beginning, we aimed to create the, the same API in the same template format, which allows the existing customers of uh, Cloud Formation to, to move into Heat. And one good side benefit of that is that Heat can be accessed by Boto, which if you're familiar with that, that's a a Python library that is used to um, that talks to all the different Amazon AWS APIs. Um, as far as uh, he go, he first open stack goes. Um, along with Solometer, he has is the first external project that has been accepted to um, to the open stack incubation process. And we we're using the same infrastructure, so I hold this on GitHub under the OpenStack um, OpenStack organization. We use review.openstack.org for code reviews, and we use the same launchpad, OpenStack Wiki, etc. And we try to follow the same code style and architecture. So ideally, any um, experienced OpenStack developer should um, feel reasonably comfortable with the heap code base and the processes that go into that. Now. Um, I'm going to show you a sort of quick example of what writing a template for Heat looks like. I don't want to get much into the details because it doesn't look very well on the slides. But, um, so the, the basic structure is as follows. You have a version declaration, you have a description, which can be shown in the UI, and then you have three main sections, parameters, resources, and outputs. Uh, parameters are for um, user specified parameters that you want to um, want to enter when you're launching the template. So these would be things you don't want to have hard coded or can't have hard coded, such as um, the Nova SSH PPA name that you're going to use to SSH into an instance, or um, if you want to have, uh, for instance, the Nova flavors um, 
parameterized so that you can um, use the same template and for, for smaller or larger um, instances you can you can put that to the parameters and then reference that. Resources sort of are the main section. Um, they actually describe all the all the actual open stack resources that are going to be created. So this is where you would put all the decoration of your virtual machines, um, your databases, uh, your quantum networks, subnets, uh, floating IPs, and all the associations that you need. And then lastly, outputs. Um, those are for sort of user-defined information that you want to get back once the whole thing has been launched. So if if what you're launching is a web app or an API, this could give you the, back the, the public entry point, which you might not know in advance if it's um, an API slash something, or it might be the internal APIs of all the instances that you launched. And um, that is, again, configurable. So essentially anything, you, anything that's in the open section, it can be referenced you can put like any any resource that, that you've defined earlier on. Um, you can put information from that resource there. So things such as IP addresses that you don't know in advance. Here's, a, here's an example of, of uh, an over instance. Each instance has a, um, each resource has, has a type. So uh, here you can see this is sort of a um, remnant of the cloud formation. We're going to change that a bit, but we still want to maintain the backwards compatibility. And you can specify a couple of metadata. So image ID would be uh, a glance name of the image that, that you want to launch from. Um, instance type is essentially open sex flavor, and key name is the SSH keypad. And you see that here we're not using um, an absolute values, but a reference. And the thing that we're referencing is actually the parameter that um, the user is going to pass when we launch this. Um, and the last two sort of important sections, for instance, is are uh, metadata and user data, where essentially you can put all your provisioning code. So in the metadata section, you can put um, packages, services, and files that you'd like to have on the instance when it's launched. So if you want to have um, Apache or MySQL there, you would just list it there. You can specify um, exact versions or just leave that line and then it is going to do what, uh, the best it can. Um, you can specify the services that you want to have running or not running. Um, and you can specify files that you want to have there. And once that um, heat is then going to make sure that all that is on the instance in the state that you want it, and then any custom code, um, any custom shell script that you want to run is going to be put in the, in the user data uh, section. So, so you can just do all your final configuration of that, or if you want, you can use Puppet or Jeff or whatever else. Um, he just sort of agnostic that way. And the last thing before the demo, I'm going to talk a bit about CloudWatch, which is, again, that's originally <coughs> Amazon services. We ported that for Heat. And that's a service that monitors um, the resources. It, it monitors the virtual instances and their resources so you can um, you can monitor things such as CPU utilization, RAM consumption, harvest consumption, and you can specify custom triggers that are going to be um, that will run your own code if you um, uh, if you want. So, for instance, when you go over with, with uh, memory, you can specify that heat is supposed to launch a new instance or whatever else. And that's actually what I'm going to show you in the demo. So what I'm going to do is have Heat launch um, a WordPress instance that's in front of a load balancer. Then I'm going to simulate a load that will, uh, that will take the memory um, to the higher level. And we'll see that Heat will, is going to spin up an instance automatically. And then when the load decreases, um, the extraneous instance is going to be um, shut down again. Oh, um, so before I get to that, um, I just want to show you, doesn't look very well, but uh, just a brief sort so of choice, um, choice sections of the template that I'm going to be launching. I try to, um, this, is, this is the section where you can specify files. Is that better? Yeah. Um, so, so this would be a file that you want to have included um, that defines um, the MySQL configuration. 
and all the references that would be a uh, database name and username and passwords that you that the user would specify when they launch the instance. Um, a bit below, we have a list of packages that we want to have installed and a list of services that we want to have running. Sorry. And just one last thing, um, I'm going to show you how the auto-scaling thing itself. So you can specify an alarm. This alarm is called uh, Lamp Alarm High. And what it does is on um, yeah, just when you have memory higher than 50%, it will, um, it will spin up another instance. There we go. So here we have um, the metric name is what we want to watch, which is memory utilization. Threshold would be um, the threshold that we need to cross. So when this, uh, when this threshold gets crossed, we're going to call up this web server scale policy, which is defined a bit above, and that just uh, spins up another instance. And we have the same thing essentially for, the, um, for, for scaling down. Now I need to do a live demo, but the problem is that um, there's lots of waiting around when you spin up an instance and turn it down and all that. So I recorded a screencast, I'm going to show you that because then we can skip the boring bits and later on if you're interested uh, I can show you how, to, how it works on, on the real laptop. So um, what I'm going to do first is um, just um, just not very good to say about that. So this just lists the uh, number of instances. Um, this is normally and heat list commands that, um, that show that we don't have any instances there running. So now we're going to run, essentially run the template that I just showed you and wait for it to come up. Um, so this is now creating progress. The instance has been created, which is going to take some time, so I'm just going to skip. And now we see that um, the load balancer and um, and the WordPress instance are running. <coughs> I'm going to SSH into the instance and tear over the heat provision log, which is a log file that is going to show you um, all the provisioning that's happening on the instance. So um, installing all the, um, all the services, packages, adding the files, and running configuration. And now that that's done, I'm just going to show you that um, we can actually um, look at the look at the instance and spin up the um, and show the work of setup. Yep. All right. So once that's done, uh, we're going to use the useful stress command to uh, simulate memory load. This is going to make sure that um, the memory gets uh, well over fifty percent, so that should trigger the auto scaling. And now there's more waiting around. Um, after about um, a minute or a couple of seconds, um, you can see that the memory um, that that we see in the log that the memory of the instance is too high, so that is going to trigger um, another instance, which we're now going to. Show. Sure. Um, it's not easy to see, but in this section, which is when we started, we had two instances, and now we have two, the same instances here, and another one below that, which has just been spun up, and it's in the build state now, so we wait for the build to finish. And just, sorry about the echo, and, and just look it up to see that it's got the first running as well. And now, last thing that we're going to do is um, kill the stress and kill the load and wait for the instance to um, get deleted again. Which is ideally what you see now. Now there are only two instances, the, the two original instances that were, um, that were launched. So, um, that's it for the demo. And I have one last point to make. Um, Heap is a fairly, fairly young project. It started in March 2012, so it's not even a year old. It's had about five co contributors um, throughout the time, 
Um, all of those are from Rathead, but we want this to be a proper open source project, so if anyone is interested, we're very much um, welcome contributions. Um, we've had about 12 other contributions um, over time, some of them outside of Rathead. These were people who were actually uh, trying to use heat in their own infrastructure. So we've had some real use cases and real um, um, feature requests in public box, so it was not developed in a vacuum. And sort of the last point that I'd just like to mention is um, for the metric system in CloudWatch, which I've mentioned earlier, um, some of our computers are collaborating with Solometer, which uh, you're going to hear about later on, um, for, for gathering the metrics from, um, directly from, from the hand visor. From and that's it. If you if you're interested, you can go to heatapi.org or go to um, GitHub for our code. Um, we're on pound heat on free note. Um, the team is distributed. We have people in the US, in Europe, and in, in Australia. So you have a pretty safe bet that someone's going to be there at any time throughout the day. And yeah, that's about it. So do you have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you need running for the stuff? No, the, uh, the question was whether when we need Solometer running for the auto scaling. Um, we don't, for the moment, the demo that I showed you um, did not use Solometer. You can use um, you can use your own monitoring systems uh, that are running from uh, from the, from inside the instance if you want, and just post the data. So um, you can use that. Any other question? Will it be ready for the Grizzly, or is that too early? Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I, I know that it's, um, I don't know about the packaging itself. It's working with Grizzly, and um, you can use it in that stack if you want, but I don't know how the official um, release thing is going, going to go on, because it's not a part of the whole project yet, and we don't know what you know, it's not clear right now for what open cycle really means or what it's going to mean in the future. So we're going to wait and see. Right now it's in incubation. Yeah. Anything else? Do you want to support more cloud providers? Um, yeah, we have some interest from someone from Cloudstack actually about writing a backend so that he could, you know, do his thing, but instead of talking to open cycle, we talk to Cloudstack. And I myself wrote uh, a patch for branding support for Delta Cloud. So right now in Heat you can write your own plugin and use um, and write sort of code that would bridge Heat to different cloud providers other than this side. Yeah. Um, for image configuration, Heat doesn't do that. Heat sort of launches images. Um, but after, after the image is launched, you can run any code you want. So if you want to use Puppet, you can just you know, put the Puppet script into the template and then the invocation as well. Um, so, all right. Yeah. How do you measure metrics? Right, so um, right, what I showed you in the demo is essentially we have an agent running inside the VM. It was just a simple Chrome job. But this, the demo that I showed you is on on our code, so on our GitHub repo, so you can just try it out yourself. So we tried to make things easy. Um, so it was just a cron job that every every minute sent it uh, where the metrics from within the instance and sent, sent them to CloudWorld. But you can do you can use your own, your own um, metric system, or you can use uh, later on Solometer, which essentially is going to read the metrics. From OpenStack itself, because KVM should KVM does know the metrics, at least CPU utilization, stuff like that, the whole metrics, but at least CPU is that.